inequality and uh, Thailand just a came just a moment before uh, we would like uh, to reconfirm that urban political ecology or political ecology very relative and uh, relevant to our research and fighting. Um, uh, from the uh, introduction and presentation of um, Professor Dang Nguyen this morning, uh, we have uh, uh, the whole picture of how the 20th scenario work on the issue of migration, uh, environment, climate change, and inequality. So for more insight, how the case work in, uh, for inequality in Ho Chi Minh City, I would like to introduce Dr. Van Nen for, his, for her presentation. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, as you can see from this picture, an urbanization can improve the uh, living condition, but they also give the big gap between the very urban and urban in Ho Chi Minh City. And uh, on our goal today is to provide you the picture of inequality between the very urban and urban area in urbanization process of Ho Chi Minh City from urban political ecology perspective. And our presentation focus on first overview, overview of inequality in Vietnam and then the um, situation of inequality between very urban and urban in Ho Chi Minh City. And then we will apply the political ecology to find out what is the causes of the social inequality in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, now uh, we will go to the social inequality in Vietnam. As you also know, the social inequality is everywhere in the world. But the different situation in the certain country. Uh, in the case of Vietnam, and although Vietnam has economic growth and poverty reduction, but social inequality emerges in four aspects. First, in income, th uh, uh, then ethnic group, and, gen and gender inequality, and area inequality. And you also see from the district, uh, just, um, just only the uh, 210 the richest, but the property in account the 12 per, 12 percent GDP in Vietnam. And gender, uh, now I also mentioned about ethnic group, and the majority ethnic group is Vietnam Ikin and Hoa. And uh, these people with the high uh, quality call condition in Vietnam. But the poorest of uh, ethnic group is in Vietnam, e, e, an, e an other group, um, for example, with the Hmong and Yao. And uh, so I think uh, the serious problem in Vietnam is also the gender in, e, inequality. You also can see from Rap here, uh, Women account over 50% in Vietnam. But there is equal opportunity between men and men and good women. Now I give you some example. Uh, um, men worker can earn can earn on average over 30% 30 30 more than good women worker. And uh, you also see uh, just only one woman minister comparison to 20 minister of cabinet of Vietnam government. And social inequality between rural and urban in concern in Vietnam. Only 30% of population live in urban, but over 50% rich people belong to urban area. And based on uh, area inequality, when we thinking about inequality in Vietnam, we often focus on social inequality between rural area and urban area. But we focus to the social inequality inside one city, such as very urban and, and, and urban area. It is also a serious problem so far because of urbanization. Among cities in Vietnam, 
Ho Chi Minh City won the biggest city within the rapid urbanization by increasing industrial zone and migration and new urban in very urban. However, infrastructure in Ho Chi Minh City can, cannot meet demand for the population increasing and this led the bit a uh, big gap between the very urban and urban in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, although social inequality is serious problem in the process of, of urbanization in Ho Chi Minh City be between very urban and 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 uh, urban. But real research often focus on only in inequality or only urbanization. That's why we choose the inequality between very urban and uh, urban to investigate. And this report will answer this question. What are the uh, situation and, and the causes of social inequality between the very urban and urban of Ho Chi Minh City? And what could Vietnam have done to further reduce this inequality? And as you also know, the, our research site is the urban and very urban. And urban here is, is the core of, of city with the high development and with the high level of urbanization. While very urban is the, bar, is the very ferry of urban area with the mix of urban industrial and rural land use, which is under uh, rapid ur urbanization. With the rapid urbanization in, in, very, uh, in very urban, the inequality between very urban and urban emerge three issues. First, economic, then public service, and third, environmental aspect. Among the disinequality in Ho Chi Minh City, and, e and economic inequality is most serious problem. Firstly, I will focus on economic inequality via income and land, own land ownership. As you can see from this graph, monthly income in urban is higher over 20% than in very urban. Because of the fast uh, fast urbanization in very urban. There is significant difference in land yield between the urban and very urban. As you can see from this graph too, and only 24, uh, only 24 urban land in 2010, but it's, in, but it's increased to uh, four, 45 per percent in 2016. And this change in more happened in very urban in Ho Chi Minh City. And so the, fluctua the fluctuation in land ownership in the very urban is larger and more complex in comparison with rural area. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, with the urban area. And uh, from the disrupt, you also can see that the dozier trend in very urban are double than than very uh, than than in urban. And uh, blending bro blending project in very urban are cheaper than in uh, urban area. Especially, so I want to mention about the Boston blending project. Project it more happen in uh, in uh, in very urban. So we because of postpone bro, bro project last the last the long time in very urban. The local in very urban have a um, uh, poor life. Also the policy of compensation and compensation is not satisfied, and most compensation project also do not take into account long-term livelihood of people. This could lead to social discontent in very urban. And second, so I want to move to the public service. And the public service will we highlight with the education opportunity 
and health care and public utility and concerning with the education opportunity so you can see from this graph and the number of uh, people per class and the number of people per teacher in very urban always higher in comparison with uh, urban area and they also show that the education quality in very urban is worse than comparison with urban and furthermore you also can see from here the non-public free uh, school in very urban more 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 crowded in in urban especially maybe you don't know the quality of uh, non-public free school in uh, in 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 very urban it's very poor uh, and in one in depth interview one baby one father said that and many people often talk about violence in a breeze school in in very urban uh, people often think it's very worry this issue but no one take care about them and the majority of children have 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 right to go to public schools public school until the 18 year old However, you also can see the people in very urban drop out of, of school more than in, in urban. And 10% 10, per, 10 percent compared to 3%. And like inequality in education and healthcare in the very urban heart has the limited access and facility facilitate in comparison to, to urban. And very urban lack of hospital. You also can see fr from this graph, very urban lack of hospital cent center and, and, and doctor. And the best doctor, the best facility often located in urban at Dr. Nguyen Nguyen and I uh, present to you uh, this morning. And next into public C C C T, you also can see the improve of say water or waste collecting service or electricity in Ho Chi Minh. But the more portion of household cannot ac accept the say water or waste co collected service or, or electricity. The phone in the uh, in the very urban area. And next. I will focus on ah, so uh, so I think I should mention about the uh, the the one issue of the public service. Uh, it's a serious mistake if we forgot to if we forgot to concern my my run in public service. In the in the process of urbanization, my run often concentrate in very urban where industrial zone located in and they are more vulnerable to access the two public service for example uh, children of migrant family with the low income they often drop out school and migrant without household book they have to pay expensive price for water or for electricity and now so i want to move to the inequality of environment. As you can see from this big, big picture, this is very different between the urban and, and very urban in Ho Chi Minh City. And as you know, when urbanization occurs in Ho Chi Minh City and the landscape with the, with the nature such as the field or, 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 or with the trees, they will re, re replace for by building the new house and um, and uh, as as you know when you come to Ho Chi Minh City you also see the environmental pollution in Ho Chi Minh City is more serious but I think if you compare between the very urban and urban area you also see that the uh, environmental problem in very urban in more serious uh, in, in comparison to urban area because 
uh, you can think that when a lot of uh, industrial zone they located in bare very urban, but they this not into the environmental treatment system. That's why the environmental problem is more serious in 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 very urban in Ho Chi Minh City. And another issue I want to mention is that when the people have to move an other place to build new house or, or, or to build the industrial zone, they also lost their community. They also lost their tire. And uh, one people said to uh, one people said in the uh, uh, one people said in in the uh, in depth in interview said that they also feel that urbanization can improve their life, but they have to face with a lot of problem, especially with the so with the so with the social evil. And so I think that so I just give you the overview of the. Uh, social inequality in Vietnam and especially in the case of social inequality in very urban and urban in Ho Chi Minh City. And uh, f from the, this background, you also ask uh, about what is the causes of the social inequality between urban and urban in Ho Chi Minh City. Now we move on to let you know uh, these causes based on the uh, the urban political e ecology uh, from by by presenting Mr. Nguyễn Minh Đội. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, Vân Anh. So in the, in the next part, I would like to uh, apply the theoretical framework in order to answer our question, uh, research question, what are the causes of the inequality between urban and peri-urban in Ho Chi Minh City and what could Vietnam have done further reduce the inequalities. So uh, first let's talk about the theory. There are many theories can brought to the uh, urban studies. In this topic we found that political ecology theory can brought as a potential uh, abroad, uh, um, framework in order to uh, observing and explaining the inequality between peri-urban and peri-urban in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, here, as you, uh, as uh, we also discussed more about the theory. So, but now in the really uh, specific uh, field and uh, really uh, specific case study, uh, I would like to make it more clear. Uh, but political ecology can be uh, considered as a good theory uh, for the KU. So there are two main framework in. Uh, Political ecology in urban political ecology, uh, post-colonial and the Marxist uh, framework. So let's talk first about the post-colonial perspective. Here, uh, the people who follow the post-colonial perspective, they interest more in the studying study. Uh, uh, they they interest more about the st the side of the everyday. So everyday here we can call everyday city. So which we believe that we can observe the inequality in both area. Here is uh, urban and peri-urban through the everyday practice of the people who live in the rural, uh, sorry, um, in the urban and peri-urban area, such as the event, problems, and stories in economics, public service, and habitat. Which one? Uh, Dr. Vang Anh already uh, presented about that. So now let's talk about the Marxist urban political uh, ecology perspective. So power. Power is the key work of the many research which focus on uh, in the Marxist urban political ecology. So power here is related among the state, market, and civil society who play the role in the interaction between uh, politics, economics, and uh, society with the uh, city natures. So this can help to, uh, we, we found that it can help to explain the causes of the in inequality between uh, urban and peri-urban in Ho Chi Minh City. So based on the theory, uh, based on the uh, theoretical review of serving and analy analyzing the state of the case in Ho Chi Minh City, we found two statements. So firstly, uh, inequality between urban and peri-urban in Ho Chi Minh City as um, inevitabilities of the urban uh, metabolism. So firstly, 
the inequalities, uh, uh, we, we found that every, every city around the world is usually divided into the different areas, uh, such as urban, suburban, and rural area. However, the difference is not inequalities. Inequalities between among those areas happen when the uh, urban division is under the imbalance and unsustainable condition. In the case, in the case study, we also found the peri-urban in Ho Chi Minh City had a really strong industrialization. At, uh, at in Ho Chi Minh City, we, at the whole city, we have 20 industrial zones, and all of them locate in the rural area, uh, sorry, in the peri-urban area. And they are also have uh, so many small factories mixed with the uh, residential area in the peri -er in the peri urban so uh, in in the industrialization process we uh, is led to the change to changing the habitat land using livelihood of the people who live in the peri urban so secondly i want to talk about the uh, immigration uh, flood in it is right dramatically in Ho Chi Minh City. Many people from another uh, provinces um, migrate and work in this city, and they count like 50, uh, more than 50 percent population of the whole of city. So now, this situation is getting worse because the city, the situation of the city, put under the limited resource of the condition. So in detail, the whole in detail what to talk more about the, 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 mm, the whole of the budget, the budget of the city, we must to be paid back to the central government to share with another rovers. So, and then the central government will reallocate to the city with a few. Uh, to make it more clear, like if you earn $10, and then you have to pay back to the central government $10, and then they will uh, reallocate you like $2. Now let's, let's think about in the big city like Ho Chi Minh City, you have $2 and how you can deal with all the problem in the, whole, in the city. So that's why we think the government cannot invest more on the infrastructures to improve the in environmental issue or uh, about the transportation problem in the, the whole of the city. They have to prioritize for the center of the city first. So that led to uh, the inequality between urban and peri-urban area. So, uh, as our statement, in uh, developing process of the city, inequality between urban and peri-urban is uh, inevitability. In this view of the process, so urban, peri-urban can be considered as uh, a brace of urbanization. They are also the, in the way to become a urban area. So now that way, uh, maybe they become good or bad. It will be uh, analyzed in our second statements. So our uh, second statement is power can create or control the inequality between urban and peri-urban. So power here, I mean the power relation between state, market, and civil society. It can be seen clearly that the power relation is not parallel. The state power over the uh, market and civil society. They are two, uh, we, we also make two scenarios. If the state had the power, and if they use it in the right way, in if effective ways to intervene uh, with the, uh, to reduce the inequality, so that is good governance, so they can have the uh, uh, city development is good. But on, um, sorry, on contracts, if the state abuse the power, they will make the situation more serious. Unfortunately, the case in Ho Chi Minh City seem like belong to the second, uh, the second one. So we found that the city is like a good institutional, such as the law, to uh, support for the decentralization and autonomy in urban governance in Ho Chi Minh City. For example, if the city wants to change their land use, for example, from, uh, they want to change the, the land use from agricultural land to the urban land, they have to ask 
uh, the prime minister in the center of the city. That is just a really simple work like that, but the, the uh, rough city is quite, I think it's quite unnecessary. So as a biggest city in Vietnam, but there are, in Ho Chi Minh City, they play the same uh, administrative systems. If we compare with the uh, other provinces, small provinces or rural provinces, we play the same, uh, the administrative systems. So that's why, it, uh, so we, we, here we don't have the municipal government like uh, other mega city around the world. So furthermore, we also found there is uh, also not good capacities and the mission of the state systems in running the city. Are not, it's, uh, they, they are not adapt with the um, city development as the people wish. And development state, uh, strategies for the city is not usually uh, in the short terms, depend on the term of the head, the, the leaders of the, the, the uh, party. Uh, it's just around five years and when the new one comes and then they will change uh, the strategy. Without, uh, there, there are no uh, long-term uh, strategy for the, for, the, for the city. So secondly, we talk about the market sectors. Here, uh, the authorities seem focus more on um, economic growth than social welfare. It's, uh, it's, I think we think it, it creates more rich and poor gap between uh, as well as the many inequalities problems in the peri-urban. Uh, let's talk about the market-oriented uh, market uh, economics. That is the quite special term we uh, practice in Vietnam and uh, China and I think Laos as well. So they are also have inequality between state companies and private entrepreneurs, especially in the public service, such as in edu education, in healthcare, in uh, ut utilities for the people. Meanwhile, uh, many state companies, they work ineffectively. So totally, we want to mention about the civil society. So civil society in Vietnam has the quick power because the strict regulation of the state because we, uh, in, the, in Vietnam, we, we, uh, we practice the uh, uh, one-party system uh, states and uh, state media system also. So that led to the lack of participation and also empowerment of the people to, into the decision-making process. To make it more clear, I want to uh, use the case study in the Thu Thiem. Uh, in District 2 in Ho Chi Minh City, this area has been planned to be a new city in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, the city's government has used their power and they connect with some rivals. Uh, we, we use this, this a case from the media, okay? Uh, there's some a private company in official uh, way. So they, uh, we, we can call this like an interest group, okay? Uh, they relocated and uh, uh, compensate for the local people for the very low land price, if we compare with the market, the land market. Uh, people has lost, so local people, they, they had been lost their land, their uh, livelihood and changing their habitat. They uh, cannot even uh, use that money to afford by the house. So meanwhile, they, the, the company, they uh, resell their land with the bride, higher, more than 20 times with the bride they pay for the local people. So the important thing here is the local people, they cannot join the full field of the rosette of decision making, which really went with their life. And uh, as a consequence, the people, uh, they feel suit, but uh, until now, this K is not still slow. So to sum up, there are all of the, K, uh, all of the causes which we believe that led to uh, inequality between urban and peri-urban in Ho Chi Minh City. According to the Urban Political Ecology Framework, we also provide some solution for uh, the, our case study. So first, we strongly suppose that if the city authority follow the standard of good urban governance, with some disciplinary include uh, effectiveness, equity, participation, and accountabilities, we think that the situation it can be improved. And the secondly, 
uh, public-private partnership, we found that uh, it is a good model in order to deal with the uh, lack of budget and the uh, research which can have to develop the uh, public service and uh, can build uh, the, trans, uh, uh, the, the, the city. Totally, as a trend of many mega cities around the world, smart urban governance, which can abroad, uh, which abroad the techn uh, uh, technology in order to manage the city uh, resource uh, effectively. So here is our, just our uh, recommendation. And then we, we believe that in the, case, in the case of Vietnam, we need to change or to make it more suitable with the situation in Vietnam. It's not, this one, we think that is the value, uh, is some solution we collect and then we believe that it's from more Western uh, country, but in the Asia value or in Vietnam, Vietnamese value, we think we have, we have to make it more suitable with us. So last but not least, we look forward to uh, our further research here. We uh, want to address that here is not a um, transdisciplinary research. This one, uh, we've, we just make a research like uh, maybe like uh, interdisciplinary. Yeah. And we, we believe that if in the further research we can use transdisciplinary for the more specific case such as we can use these methods in, in order to research um, uh, one districts which uh, include the inequality between peri-urban and urban in one district, or we just focus on one aspect of the problem, such as how to engagement of the, the power of the uh, uh, civil society uh, in, uh, in the governance, uh, urban governance. So we also I would like to develop the, uh, the, the urban political ecology framework into the new concept and create the uh, innovative solution to slow the inequalities in urbanization process. So that's it on our presentation. Thank you for your attention. So this is time for Q&A. So uh, we would like to ask you if you have any questions, just please raise your hand and we will approach you soon. So, any question? Um, I just asked Christoph not to talk again because uh, uh, the professors are talking too much and to give the students more space, but if no student is going to say anything, then I'll kick it off, yeah? Yeah, wait. Three minutes. Come on. Any grabs? Come on. No? Dominic? No? <laughs> Conrad, okay. Yeah, it worked. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, I'd like to ask you if you have any example for best practice how to engage and activate local communities to um, improve their uh, their living situation in the pre uh, uh, peri uh, urban area. Um, and uh, because I think it's um, uh, as a researcher sometimes it's hard to um, to to approach people who actually are somehow. Uh, not uh, really satisfied, but have uh, somehow settled in into their situation, and um, it needs some kind of uh, community sense to um, to actually change their uh, surrounding structures. Um, maybe you could give an example for that, if you have any. You mean uh, example about the solution or uh, what we could do for the further research? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, so here we think. Uh, one of the problem in 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 Vietnam it, it's hard to talk about like universal, but here is the case in Vietnam. 
Uh, we think is we have the, some uh, really special <laughs> situation uh, in if we talk about the communities uh, because like like I said before uh, in Vietnam uh, the civil society organization they uh, follow the the rule of the states so that's why uh, the people they some somehow they lost their voice so if we but they uh, they awareness about that is not uh, really strong so if we uh, in the further research, maybe we, uh, we can uh, invite them as uh, our stakeholder to, uh, together we can, uh, like, uh, uh, we can give more uh, the knowledge or the solution together uh, uh, for their awareness about their, their, uh, uh, their contribution and uh, as well as the, um, their right. Uh, to, 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 uh, to, in order to turn to the uh, decision making process in Ho Chi Minh City? Um, yeah, um, let me rephrase that. Um, could you give an example of best practice how to activate the stakeholders into more, uh, into having a more uh, sort like community sense and a solidarity uh, with their surrounding areas instead of just accepting their situation how it actually is and just living with it? Actually, uh, uh, could you uh, make your question it more specific? Uh, <laughs> I was wondering if you have any uh, example um, how to uh, engage the people already living in that kind of area where there's a lot of inequality when you look at, uh, specifically when you look at, for example, District 1 in, in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, where everything is shiny new, and uh, in the um, other areas you look from afar uh, to the uh, skyscrapers, to the expensive cars, and so on. And um, when I was there, uh, people seemed to like, um, they just accepted it, the, the status quo, how it is. And I was wondering, could you ex give an example how to uh, yeah, reach to the people so that they are n not really angry, but say, let's, let's really and, uh, fix this kind of problem. So that they can acknowledge the inequality. So um, l l let me... Um answer you in, in, in my opinion. I think uh, that is quite an uh, interesting question. If we, uh, some people say that if inequality, uh, the, uh, how far they can adopt the inequalities because the case, the, the thing here in Vietnam is uh, the in economics is still growing. And the people can, uh, the people, they, if we compare with the past, their life is better. So, and then they, I think that is the way we accept uh, the inequality as, like I say, as the, uh, uh, that is uh, how it's, it's, uh, urbanization is work, because uh, the, the good things is it make the people life better. So, and the people, it's like, in their daily life, it look better than uh, in the past. So, they, uh, they accept that, and, but, Maybe in the in the future, step by step, their awareness and the situation in this uh, in, uh, it, it changed. I think it will uh, have something change again. I think it's like um, feeding breadcrumbs to the poor people when the rich people are actually having a full dinner plate. So this is how uh, um, the system has worked up to now, from my point of view. You give them. Uh, something uh, at uh, a little bit of improvement so that they are somehow happy and see ah, uh, something can actually be uh, something can actually be done it's like um, participating in a lottery people see someone rich uh, everybody has an equal chance but actually not everyone has uh, not everyone has a chance to get to a certain point So, okay, thank you for your question and very, um, uh, very um, strategic question, how to reduce the uh, inequality and how to engage people in the uh, decision making to reduce the inequality in Ho Chi Minh City. So at uh, our presentation um, so far, the 
Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh just have one party and on the policy and regulation uh, we have a have to follow um, this party decision. So we have a social society, our NGOs, our CSO, but very much close, very much linked to the policy and regulation under the con control of governance of city. So we would like to engage as many as possible of society, uh, civil society and NGOs and CSO into our research, how to reduce the inequality in our City, but the gap between the big, uh, the big gap between the rich and the poor still widening. That's why we cannot have a very good policy, as we mentioned in our presentation. That are the, the questions still do lead into the research further in the future. So I would like to get people here engaged in our research. If you have a more uh, contribution and recommendation, just send us um, your contribution. Thank you. <laughs> question because we have a limited time now. You have uh, hello, thanks for your uh, for your presentation. I really liked it. And um, the last comment you mentioned that you are planning to take the research further to make it more transdisciplinary. Yeah. Uh, so, or maybe I would like to know um, uh, what would be your uh, next steps or how would you conceptualize this then? Thanks. Or, or who would be your, yeah. Pardon? You mean how we could implement in the transdisciplinary way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your question. If we have the good chance to continue with this research, so we think that we will try to apply the transdisciplinary with the one uh, or main, uh, with the minor issue of the social inequality in, in very urban in comparison with the urban in Ho Chi Minh City. Such as maybe we can uh, focus on the chance of the, um, the um, children of the migrant uh, who live in the, the very urban. As I already show you here, and uh, a lot of uh, people uh, come from the poor migrant family. They have to drop out. But it is very difficult when we try to solve this problem because it involves a lot of factors, such as the income, such as the level of education of parents, or also NGO, also government. So I think if we can have good chance to uh, carry out the transdisciplinary, we have to invite Bayern in invite the people in this area, also invite NGO, also invite the officer of government. We can work together and give the one research question and give the, the methodology and give the same the solution. And by that's why we can apply the Chinese linear, but I think it's not easy. Yeah. So um, I want to continue some work uh, to Dr. Ben. Okay, so I want to um, to put some more words uh, in, uh, for Dr. Ben uh, recommendation uh, because you know the, our. Uh, the, the power relocation between a state uh, market and civil society is not in balance. It's not in balance. So uh, state control over the power over other two parties. Then if we want stakeholder from the market, from uh, civil society engage in our project, it's a little bit hard and difficulty to get them fully participation. So the still the challenge in, in this uh, approach of research. Okay, did uh, Michelle, the time's up now? Do we still have a time or not? If there are more questions, we can continue. So any question more? Uh, any comments? Yeah. Uh, any comment on our presentation? Uh, 
Um, I really liked. Uh, I really like your work. Um, I think it's really interesting. Just the, the solutions at the end. Uh, I mean, the stuff with public-private partnership. Um, I mean, speaking from experience in Europe, it's not a good idea. <laughs> Don't go there. Uh, yes. It's not. It's not a partnership. But this is something we could discuss. Yeah? Um, uh, the other thing is that if uh, you're going to be hosting the summer school next year, right? Yes. And uh, this just the idea just came to me. Um, this would be like uh, another possibility of doing the field uh, work. If everyone like joined in this project, we have one year to prepare it. Mm -hmm. Then we could really do some some real research in that uh, in that frame framework. Maybe that's an idea we could think about. Thank you for your suggestion. And um, because I attend the last um, gender trainer workshop in Cholalangong University, and I learned from the colleges from the Western country, and then I figured out what uh, our difficulty and challenge when I applied the theory of gender disseminality into my real case in Ho Chi Minh City and Vietnam. Because you have a balance power between three uh, factors, state, uh, market and civil society, they have the same voice. But in my case in Vietnam, we cannot. So uh, I and David from Chiang Mai University discussed a lot how we can apply the theory into um, our country uh, with differentiation from Western country. That's a big question. And I want to uh, further focus more for my students in the next uh, field trip and someday after uh, summer school. Thank you.